Twizel is home to some of the most dramatic and beautiful landscape in the country. And today we've traveled here to meet a man who's built an incredible small home to take advantage of all of this. And you'll be happy to know he's set it up as an Airbnb so you can enjoy it too. Hey Gary, how are you? Good, thanks Bryce. Good to see you. It's great to meet you and I'm very excited to see this beautiful home of yours. Great. It's been a uh, bit of a journey for us, so we're pleased to have you here. It is a pleasure to be here. So obviously I want to talk about the home, but first I have to talk to you about this incredible section. How did you find this place? You're just really, really lucky. My wife has a family connection down here, so we were visiting the area and she fell in love with it. Right place, right time, and convinced me to buy it. And I don't regret it one little bit. 10 acres of just great landscape. It sure is. I mean, you've got these incredible imposing mountains in the backdrop and beautiful dramatic colours with the grass. Oh, it changes every day. The weather sort of predominantly comes from that way and you can see it coming up the ranges and it just changes colour as it's moving along and you know, some days it's a bright red sunset and other nights it's all dark and gloomy and thundery, sort of hopefully like what tonight will be. Absolutely. And the design of this house really is just quite brilliant. You mm. worked together with an architect on this, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. Barry Connor from Christchurch. He's been involved in another couple of projects that we've done. Just a natural guy to go to for us. Fortuitously, he's got a holiday home just down the road as well. So we managed to combine trips for him down here and visiting the site and that. So we come up with an idea, talked to Barry, and um, he uh, sexed it up for us. He certainly did. It really does just marry perfectly with the environment and it is just a striking house to look at. Yeah, thank you for that. We love it. We really do. It's different. And yeah, we could have built something a heck of a lot cheaper if it was just a cookie cutter one off a design somewhere, but that's just not us. We like to be complicated and this certainly was complicated. Even though it's only 50 square metres, I don't think there's a straight line or a straight angle anywhere. And what was your reason for wanting to build a small home on the land? The council allows two dwellings on this size block of land. So they allow a minor dwelling, which is under 50 square metres, and a major dwelling. So we decided that we'd do the minor dwelling first, and then we'd do the major dwelling later on. Great idea. And the colour scheme that you've chosen for the house is really unique as well. The black and then the startling contrast with the orange. Yeah, that was on purpose. The Siberian larch is the timber. and that can fade to a very golden colour and the architect was originally thinking that we'd leave it like that so it would go into the landscape much more but then we decided that the contrast was much nicer and just to break it up and to show that connection with the ground is why we chose the orange paint we love it now the house itself is beautiful but you have gone to the next level with the landscaping here as well haven't you I believe that the landscaping is just as important as the house. You can have a beautiful house and if you don't do the landscaping, it just doesn't do it justice. So you've got to spend that time and effort and energy to do it. And we're lucky here with this environment that it's quite easy to try and replicate. Absolutely. I totally agree with that sentiment because the house is important. That's our shelter. But it's also really nice to build in these assets that encourage us to spend time outside. You've got to. In this sort of place here, Half the reason you come here is to see the outside. Here in the Mackenzie Basin, you know, we've got the world's largest night sky reserve. So you've got to recognise that and incorporate it into your home design. If you didn't do that, you wouldn't be doing the place justice. So we've got the outdoor bathtub, we've got the front deck and sort of sitting areas outside. And it's just nice to sit out there in the late at night and all you hear is maybe frogs five kilometres away. Sound just travels so fast here at night time. Now obviously in the future your plan is to live here full time, but mm. right now it is a holiday home and you're also renting it out on Airbnb. Yeah, that's right. We thought, well, we're not here all the time. Why not try it? Once we finished the house, we decided that, you know, what are we going to do with it? And because my partner's still in Christchurch studying and I float between the two, when I'm not here, it just seemed a waste that it wasn't being utilised. And... Having that extra income, it's a bonus. It does help. 
Well, this home really is something very special. I love its striking exterior. I love the way that it fits into the landscape. And I am very excited to see the interior design. Should we check it out? We should. Come on in. After you. Thank you. So come on in, Bryce. Thank you very much. Oh, wow. Now this is something very special. First of all, your eye is just completely drawn to that incredible circular skylight. Yeah, we're pleased with that. It was actually a last minute decision. We thought that we needed a point of difference. And the night sky, like we were saying before, you've got to take advantage of it, and why not? And it's quite unusual immediately walking into a home and being in the sleeping area. Yeah, we're pleased with the way it is because people come in, they open the door, they can see outside, and the skylight's the first thing in here that they see. And then when they turn around here, they get the view outside. So we wanted to draw people to the skylight first and then the outside. And I think it is quite nice because stepping into this part of the home, it immediately feels very comfortable and very welcoming. Yeah, it is. The plywood, it gives you that nice sort of warm, sort of enclosed feeling. The place is mimicked on a skylark because on this ground here, on the section, we have skylarks and rabbits and we thought we'll recognise the skylarks. So we wanted to make it look like the inside of a skylark's nest. So it was all earthy sort of colours and the, and the ribs and all that. Yeah, very, very nicely done. And I really do like what you've done with the lighting here as well. The strip lighting is just very unobtrusive, but it really adds a lot of character to the home. We agree. We talked about having sort of different sorts of lighting, you know, the pendant type lights and that. But because the place is only 50 square metres, all those visual obstructions is what I call them. You've got to remove the ball and the LED strip lighting, perfect. Yeah, wonderfully done. I like the way that you've lowered the window there as well to really get the view of the exterior from when you're lying in bed. Yeah, that was deliberate. Outside there, you'll see all the grasses and that. So it's just really nice to be able to open up that curtain in the morning and just roll over and look out rather than having to sit up to look out. Absolutely. And I like how you've got the storage behind the bed there as well. Yep. You've always got a place to put a book or a glass of wine. Very important. Tidy wardrobe in the corner there too. Tidy little wardrobe, yes, and a little bit of shelving there for storage. Excellent. And then what do we have behind the bed there? Um, come down this way and we'll show you. Let's check it out. We've got the ensuite directly behind the headboard. All right. And this is the... Um, Ensuite door and then behind it in this sort of cupboard space we've got the washing machine and dryer which can be converted back into a wardrobe space if we ever wanted to. Yeah, great idea putting that there. And then can we check out the ensuite? Certainly. There we go. Oh, now this is beautiful. First of all, that shower is really something and I especially love the way that you've put the doorway in there to connect the shower with the outdoors. Yeah, because we've got the bathtub outside, um, we wanted a logical access point to the bathtub and to the cabin. You know, it's nice to be outside, you can come back in and then put your bathrobes on and back into the house. And I really like your choice of tiles in here as well. It's very earthy and makes it feel like a very strong room. Yeah, it does. Um, we've talked before about the grass outside and paying tribute to that. And we also have rocks on the ground. and. Uh, we have a lot of them, so we thought that we should connect the bathroom with that as well. And you've complemented the stone with some lovely modern black fixtures as well. Yeah, that's right. We didn't want to cause that visual clutter by having lots of colour and um, black was just the natural continuation. Yeah, and you've got the combination of timber and metal and stone, really all of the elements being represented here. Yep, earthy. Yeah. And I see you've got a flushing toilet here as well, so you're on a septic system? Yes, we are, yep. And then where does your water come from? Um, a bore, 71 metres down, I think wow. it is. And that gets pumped up from a submersible pump into a water tank, and then from the water tank pump to the house. Excellent, so you've got a good water supply here? It's beautiful, beautiful fresh underground water. Great, well should we check out the rest of the house? Yep, come on through. Oh, wow. Immediately, that view just absolutely dominates this room, doesn't it? It does, which is why we put the big windows at the end there, and um, it's just great sitting on the couch or on the chair there reading a book and just watching the world go by.
it really is just so special having that view. And I love the way that everywhere you stand in this house, there really is something to look at out one of the windows. And on purpose. We have this fantastic uh, landscape out there, so we just have to see it. And this kitchen really is very beautiful. Again, it just ties so well into the house. Mm. That's right. Again, it was a very deliberate choice. Previous houses, we've had big, bright, you know, green and orange kitchens and that, but that didn't really suit this sort of environment or this structure. So uh, we decided to keep it minimal and go black again. Yeah, and again, you've got plenty of storage and everything here. There's enough storage in here for a full house. You know, my partner, she's a fantastic cook, so she wanted a full-size kitchen, and I'm glad that we did it. Great, and all of the necessary appliances in here too? Yep, just draw, microwave, oven, induction cooktop. And I like how you have the one-piece welded bench top and sink as well, because again, it goes with that sort of minimalist and very tidy theme in here. And also hygienic. You know, if you have the basins that have been put on top of uh, a laminate or something like that, you've always got that look that um, gathers all the grip that is just about impossible to get out. So, yeah, a much more hygienic surface. Very true. And you've got a lovely little dining table here as well, very romantic by the fire. That's right, it is. And it's just the right size. Um, it can be folded down and put against the wall if we have more people here and need more floor standing space, uh, we have it. And it really is lovely to see this fire here as well. It's such a lovely feature in the house and it gets pretty chilly here so it's very important. It does. Um, we have snow down on the ground here probably a couple of times a year and you just want to hibernate. And in front of a great little fire like that, it's perfect. It sure is. And then of course, complementing the cozy fire is this very comfortable looking lounge. Yeah, it is. It's very comfortable. It's surprising you don't feel claustrophobic, even with 10 people in here, and it's a good size. And then again, the lounge is just so wonderfully open to this incredible vista in the deck outside. Yeah, those stacking doors fold all the way across, and that outdoor deck just becomes part of the lounge. Yeah, I love the stone on the deck as well. What's the story behind that? A lot of effort and energy <laughs> to um, lug that into position. I bet. But we got it there and um, once it was there, it wasn't going to go anywhere. So we built the deck around it. It really is one of those things that just fits in so well with the rest of the character of the house because it looks like this house was built around nature. And that stone is a perfect symbol of that. It is. We have intruded into the natural landscape. So it's only right that the natural landscape should have a um, prominent place within the house. I completely agree. So how long have you been in this home now? I've been living here predominantly for the last six months, but the building process took about two years. I've been involved from day one and I was the first person to put a peg in the ground. I then realised how rocky the ground was and I had to shift that peg about five times and then I had to dig a big hole to put the peg in, a bit of dirt to make that peg stay in the right place. So yeah, I've seen it from the very, very beginning to now, and I could tell you what's in behind every sheet of ply on this wall, and um, it's nice having that connection to it. And how are you actually finding living in the home? I love it, absolutely love it. I've lived in big houses before, you know, five bedrooms, multiple bathrooms, big car garages, but the reality is you don't need all that. 50 square meters is just an ideal size. And I bet your Airbnb guests just find this incredible. All the reviews that we've had so far have all been fantastic. They've been fantastic guests. And it's the landscape that everyone seems to talk about. Everyone just loves the architecture and the skylight seems to be number one. Oh, I bet. So for our Airbnb guests, this is a place that they can relax and recuperate. I think it's hopefully for them a chance to reflect and reconnect with each other. The place here is for two people and that was on purpose because it's a place that we feel that gives us connection and we're hoping that others receive the same from this environment in our house and so far they seem to. And what would you say your absolute favourite thing about being an Airbnb host is? Reading the reviews. It just reinforces what we feel about the place um, because in all honesty you know when you're building the place you see it every single day it becomes lost in you so when someone says 
oh my God, what a great place. It just ratifies what you hoped the place would be like when you built it, and it has. And can I ask what this home cost to build? Because it's so condensed, and because we have all the appliances, and we chose to upgrade on most things, it's around about 8,000 a square metre, which is more than what you would normally pay. So in total, we're looking at about 400,000 then for this home. And I do think that is a really wonderful budget considering the landscaping that's gone into it, considering the really high quality fixtures and fittings all throughout the home. And this really is a dream place to call home now. It is. It's a lovely place to live in. You don't need a lot of space around you. I think it's more enclosing, it's more comforting living in a small place like this. So this home is a sanctuary. I used to be in a corporate world and I just got tired of that stress. Um, so coming down here and having this sort of vista to look at and the quietness, it's serene. It's just a really great place to reconnect with yourself. Well, Gary, you really have done just an exceptional job with the design and the build of this home. I love the way that walking into the space, you just feel completely protected from the elements and yet completely immersed in this wonderful landscape at the same time. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. Thank you very much. Cheers. This really is such a beautiful small home. It's incredibly practical in its design and yet absolutely astoundingly beautiful. One of the things that I like best about it is that it just looks like it's meant to be there. The way that the architecture complements the landscape is just perfect. Because ultimately, really, that house is about celebrating all of this. And I especially like that Gary's decision to become an Airbnb host has not only enriched his experience with this home, it also means that you get to share it too. I want to say a huge thank you to Airbnb for partnering with us in this video and helping to make what we do possible. All over the world, it's so inspiring to see people like Gary who have constructed these wonderful, incredible homes and who open them up so that you can get to experience them through Airbnb. If you have a special place that you'd like to share and if you're interested in becoming an Airbnb host, make sure you click the link in the video description to find out more.